Hey everyone, today I'm gonna review This Is What It Feels Like by Rebecca Barrow. I received the knock of this through Edelweiss in exchange for an honest review and this book comes out November 6th. This is what it feels like is a YA contemporary and at the center of it are three girls and they were in a band together and really good friends but then two years prior to where this book starts there was just a lot of shit going on in their lives and they kind of split up as a band and also as friends. Two of the main characters Jules and Dia remain best friends but then we also have Hannah and it kind of follows the three as they find their way back together through music and so many other issues as well. <laughs> this book was absolutely fantastic and I'd highly recommend you read this. I know this is, I personally think, this is kind of not the best time for it to be released. I definitely think this should have been a spring or early summer release. It takes place over the summer, the cover screams summer. I definitely think that this really would have benefited from an earlier release, but even if you're not in the mood for contemporary at the moment, I'd highly encourage you to put this on your must-read list for spring or summer 2019 because it's just so fantastic. So at first I want to get into the representation. I tried to write down as much as I could, but when there's so much in here as it is in this novel, sometimes you will miss things. Jules is a lesbian and I'm also pretty sure that she is a woman of color but i did not specifically highlight anything in the story and i could not find it but something in my brain tells me she was talking about being not white i'm saying this with caution but i don't want to you know not mention it because i'm like 75% sure. <laughs> then Jules' love interest Autumn is fat and she is questioning her sexuality. Then we have Dia. She's definitely a woman of color. I know she is described as having deep brown skin and she is also the mother of a two-year-old so this deals with being a teen mom. And then we also have Dia's love interest Jesse, who is a man of color. And then finally we have Hannah who is another of the main characters and she deals with, well she dealt with alcohol addiction and went to rehab and is now sober. So I think you can already tell from that that this talked about a whole lot of things. But I thought that because of the three different POVs all of the topics and issues in this book were always multi-layered and they would always be looked at from different perspectives. Like sometimes you read a book and it has multi-POVs and you're like why though? Or you just don't care or it doesn't make a difference for you or for the story. In this one the multi POVs completely benefited the story and I love that. I also really love that the parents were super involved especially in Dia and Hannah's case. With Dia I just realized I don't know how to pronounce her name at all. Dia? I'm just saying it like that but it might be like Dia? Oh my god now I'm getting self-conscious about it. <laughs> But um, she has so much support from her parents when it comes to raising her daughter. You know, her parents take care of a child when she's at work or when she was still going to school. And I just really like that, like seeing all of the support in her raising her child was fantastic. And then we also have the relationship with Hannah and her parents who, you know, obviously went through a lot with her daughter and this was just a really interesting dynamic because you could tell as a reader that everything the parents did came from a good place. They were just very worried and you could tell that as a reader but at the same time it's just suffocating for Hannah. She also does understand where her parents are coming from but at one point she is just like I cannot take this anymore like when are you gonna start trusting me again and I just like this relationship especially I thought was so well done and so realistic and just multi-layered as well I really love that. Now I have never except for that one time in school I've never read a book about a teenage pregnancy or a teen mom because I feel like for the most part if this is a thing that a main character is kind of experiencing, it will be the main topic of the book and I'm not interested in that. The fact that this was just in here and it was definitely a thing that very much influenced Dia's life, it wasn't like the main topic and I just, I loved seeing Dia raise her daughter. I love the relationship that they had. I love the relationship Jules had to Dia's daughter and 
I just really loved reading about this. It really portrayed well that this is obviously a huge thing and it can change your life, but at the same time, if you have the right support, you can go on with your life the way that you wanted to and that you plan to do in the first place. And I just really love that. I think it showed a very, very, very positive portrayal of a teenage pregnancy and being a teen mom. And also we kind of definitely read that she will get the odd looks here and there, that she will definitely be, you know, a stereotype to one people. I think there's like one line where it's like, some people will just, you know, see another brown girl with a baby. And so that is definitely mentioned, but we don't ever actively experience any of that. So we know it's there. We know people are prejudiced, but, it's not something we ever have to experience and I really like that. Like on the contrary, the most people that we would kind of be in contact with in this book were super supportive and absolutely lovely. And I think that's so great. Like this just shows that a book can be realistic, but at the same time doesn't have to like crush your heart with the harsh reality of this world because we all know people are shit. <laughs> in Dia's storyline we also have her dealing with grief there's a lot of stuff going on there as well and the way the grief influences her relationships especially her relationship with her friend Jesse. seeing that kind of relationship between them develop I love that too like one of my favorite aspects and then as I said one of the main characters Jules is a lesbian and she also has a love interest so we get to experience a really wonderful female female romance and these warm my heart every time I just think that the development between them was really great as well I really really loved Jules love interest Autumn and there is also a really well-written sex scene between the two which you might know I find that really important to point out just as and I also find that super important while it's just mentioned in like you know two or three sentences kind of like randomly female masturbation is mentioned and it's so important to normalize that the fact that so little YA books in general with female protagonists will mention that makes me really mad so every time it does get mentioned even if it's just like as a small comment in a sentence it makes me happy and I want to mention it please normalize female masturbation and then we have Hannah's alcohol abuse which might have been my favorite part of the whole novel I just think that Hannah was incredibly relatable and I think that even if you have never had a sip of alcohol you will relate and understand absolutely where Hannah is coming from and how it all got so bad how you know this got to an addiction I love that so much I think this especially spoke to me because you know I live in a country where you can start drinking beer and wine when you're 16 and so in my life I have already experienced the fair share of people getting alcohol poisoning I don't know seeing this storyline of Hannah and how it was handled just really really hit me and I just really think that this is such an important thing to talk about in YA. I think this will open a lot of teens eyes and I hope it will and I just really appreciated that. I really loved it and as I said I thought it was super relatable even if you don't drink at all. Just where Hannah was coming from made a lot of sense and I love that. And I mean that's not even all of it, that's just like the kind of main topics and issues that these characters go through. There's obviously a storyline about how they find their way back together, how they start making music again and so many good relationships in there. Hannah has a sister who she has a really amazing relationship with, there's one kind of band friend that Hannah has a really good relationship with. I just, I loved everything about this. I loved all of these topics and issues. I thought they were all so well done. I thought that the band aspect, the songwriting aspect was so well done. I could make like a, you know, 30 minute video about all of the amazing things in here and how everything was just portrayed so very well. But I think you get the gist. I think you get that I really love this and that I would highly, highly recommend it. I think this is also really great because while it has all of these really deep and dark topics, it doesn't feel very like dark or like it weighs you down, like not at all. Um, on the contrary, it, it makes you really happy, honestly. It's a really 
kind of positive, happy book to read and it will leave you in a great mood. And yeah, I just really, really like this book and I would highly recommend it. That is everything that I want to say about This Is What It Feels Like by Rebecca Barrow. If you have already read the book, I want to know your thoughts or if you're looking forward to it or now planning to pick it up, I would love to know that as well. And yeah, I make new videos every Wednesday and Sunday with occasional reviews on Friday. So click subscribe to never miss anything and hit the little bell so you get notified as well. And thank you so, so much for watching. I guess I'll see you soon. Bye!